How you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this Polaroid look using Adobe Lightroom. So this is a really, really cool preset that you can make yourself, and it's quite realistic as well. So I'm going to walk you through the process. It's quite simple and it's relatively fast. So stick with me and I'll uh, show you how to do it. So I'm just going to reset everything to the beginning. So just bear with me. There we go. So this is the original shot. Now one bit of advice is, is that if you are doing some pictures, this works really, really well when you slightly overexpose your picture. Okay, so that will give you more of a Polaroid look to start with. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring the contrast down to minus 20 just to help flatten the image. And we're also going to bring the highlights down to minus 10 and the shadows down to minus 20. So all this is doing is giving us a really good baseline to work from the image so because we've done that we just want to make sure that we're not losing too much tones with the whites and the blacks I know this is fairly overexposed but we still want to add that white and that black back in just to give it some texture and some clarity there so once you're happy with that we can then move on to the texture clarity and the dehaze and this is again just going to help us pull the image apart a little bit so this is actually quite a destructive process that we're doing to start with so plus 10 on the texture and then the clarity we want at minus 20 to that we want to get that quite quite far in there and then the dehaze i'm going to push that up to plus 10 but depending on your image will determine how much you need to push that and you can see as i push that i get a more contrasting image so it really depends on your particular shot so let's add some vibrance and take some saturation away so i'm going to push the vibrance up to plus 40 and then with the saturation I'm just going to bring that down to around minus 15 and that just balances everything out for us from all the stuff that we've stripped away so if you have, quickly have a look you can see what we've done the before and after there you can see we're just taking out some of the contrasts and some of the tones there so let's come to the tone curve this is where most of the contrast and magic is going to happen Let's make three dots along that point there and another point in the middle there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dragging this bottom left hand corner up. Now this is the blacks and we're going to be crunching them blacks. Now the most important part in this is this adjustment here. If I push this too high, you'll see that I start to lose detail in these black areas. I start to get lots of weird shapes appearing so I need to push this as much as I can without introducing that so I think it's around there and if we just curve this off a little bit it'd be a nicer graduation and then let's come to this point and just see what happens with these tones so I think a little bit higher there that's quite good and we can leave the others as they are you may want to tweak these depending on your picture you can just slightly raise these so if you're having trouble with this just slightly raise them and you'll see that that usually fixes anything wrong with the highlighted areas there so if we look at the before and after on there you can see what we've done we've actually matted the picture now so we've taken most of the tones away we've made sure that we've got a little bit of black and white to work with and we've also just boosted the colors because we're going to move on to the colors now and get the final look of what we want so we're going to be adjusting the hue saturation and luminance but I'm, I'm going to run through them as individual colors I find that a lot easier now so the reds I'm going to bring the hue down to minus 10 and then I'm going to jump to the saturation and just pull that down to minus 20 and then the orange we're going to come up to the hue and that's going to be plus 15 and the saturation plus 15 and then the luminance, so the brightness of it is going to be plus 10. There you go. So the yellow, we just want to bring down this quite far to, I'd say around minus 80 usually works. You Again, depending on your image, you might want to go a little bit less, a little bit more. It really depends on the colors of your shot. So the luminance then, let's just add a little bit of brightness back in because we've done that. So plus 20 and then let's stick to the saturation for a little bit let's come to the green minus 20 same with the aqua let's bring that down to minus 20 and we're going to do the same with the blue actually so i'm going to bring that down to minus 20 uh, but i'm also going to change 
the hue of the blue that's going to go down to a minus 30 that's looking pretty good so last couple of adjustments now purple minus 20 and magenta minus 20 so you can see there that we've just pulled these colors out okay just pulled them right down matted them down more but that is why I pushed the vibrance up here a little bit okay so this effect was taken place before we've made these adjustments so you can if you want do this first HSL first and then do this vibrance to get a little bit more of a, a final finish but I've done this so many times now that I know that that will work for this particular setting let's come down to the color grading and what we want to do is basically we just want to add a real nice yellow tinge to the image and that will give us our Polaroid look the old sort of 70s look so let's just come to the hue. I'm going to double click on it. This is the easiest way to do it. I'm just going to type in 60s. So that gives us this lovely sort of yellow. And then the saturation, we are going to add just a little bit of plus 15. And then what I'm going to do is come down to the balance and I'm going to pull that down to minus 30 just to balance that out a little bit better. There we go. So that doesn't look like we've done a lot, but that color grading has made a big big difference in the overall image you can see there's the before and there's the after so you can see there that if i zoom in you can see that all of that red has gone the and the blues as well that are in these greens you can see there's a lovely yellow tinge to it so that's all that was needed just to give it this real sort of classic look so let's come down to the bottom here within the detail we're just going to add 10 points just to sharpen it there so with the noise reduction we want to add 20 on the luminance because of the amount we've done and the color we're going to add plus 25 just to help that along because we've done a lot of work there um, that looks pretty good so let's carry on going down and i think we could Add a, a little bit of a vignette so let's just go minus 20 leave the rest as it is that's nice it's just a little little vignette there just to bring the eye into the subject so let's come to the grain and with this i'm going to go to plus 40 so i'm going to put in quite a bit size 25 and roughness 50 and you'll see there that that's added a nice vignette and some nice grain to it and that's going to give us a really really nice overall finish so if we look at the before and after of that you can see that just binds everything together and gives it a real old style look so that is the process so if we press the y key you'll see the before and after there and you'll see that it does morph into this sort of old school picture i really really like it it works really really well so like i said in the beginning make sure that you've got pictures that are you know, have hard light on them like this so really strong directional light and are slightly overexposed not too much it just helps with the overall finish so i hope you've enjoyed that i look forward to seeing your videos and take care i'll see you in the next one Bye bye